don't want to be an it girl. All right, guys. So today we are going to do a little sit down, chit chat, and just give y'all the real tea on what's been going on in my life. You see this flip? This is my handy dandy black man. You know, he's never too far. But today we're going to sit down and talk a little bit about life. Just give y'all what's been going on. Do my makeup to go out today and we just gonna get right into it. You know, I wanna be a little bit more open and share about like life and things that I got going on. So I definitely want this to be like the start of videos like this. If y'all like them, let me know. If y'all have any questions about what I talk about, leave them in the comments and we just gonna get right into the video. Okay, girls, I don't even know where to start. It's been such a long time since I did a little sit down video and I've never really done like a personal video like this one. And we just gonna push my hair back out the way. Cause uh, I put these little dookie twists in to, uh, I washed my hair this morning. So that is why they're in these little dookie twists. Um, but I have something to do today. It's, sa it's shopping Saturday. But I was like, let me sit down, set up the camera and talk to the girls, let them into some things that have been going on in life y'all let me tell you life the beginning of 20 mm, 2024 child do i even know what year we in the beginning of 2024 has been one beginning okay it has for sure been a beginning so i guess first i'll start off by talking i'm writing a book guys Yes, some of y'all have been following me know that while I was in college, I published a poetry book and I loved it. It's my baby. It's called The Beauty of My Bare Bones. I'll link it in the description. You can check it out. But I am currently writing my first fiction novel. Now, a lot of y'all, I didn't do too much vlogging when I was in college just because I was in college for such a short period of time before I graduated. But... Throughout my time in college, I did do a lot of like long, short stories, but I never did like a full length novel. It was originally my plan to go back to school to get my MFA in fiction or poetry or to try and do both of them. But as life has panned out right now, that is not what is happening. But I'm still very excited about finally writing this book. I have so many different like books that are like outlined within like different notebooks that I have, different um, things that I have going on. So like, I'm really excited to really just start this process. So I plan on doing a lot more content surrounding like what my life is like trying to be a writer again, cause y'all know I took that long ass sabbatical, but it was very much needed. Like if you haven't heard about my sabbatical, go skip back to a couple of videos when I talked about going to be a full-time content creator and why I was taking a break from poetry after I had such an amazing run of poetry at the beginning half of last year. But I really needed a break. I just needed some space for the community that I was like involving myself in. But I also just needed like space to create. This book is of course gonna be a rom-com maybe because I like to think that I'm funny. You know, some people don't think that I'm funny and that's fine. That's their problem. I like to think that I'm funny, especially when I get to just write the little shit that come out my head. So I definitely plan on making more videos about like outlining my novel, you know, maybe a work with me day to like talk about the chapter in my novel. I have no clue if I'll pitch this like agents or something when it's done, but I definitely think that this is my one thing this year that I'm actually going to like drill myself to do because I've been saying I wanted to finish like a book forever and you know, it just literally turns into short stories because I feel like I don't have the capacity to finish them. Or, you know, some things are just better suited for a short story. So I am so excited about writing my book and being back in my writer girl era. So for the first 21 days of the year, I have been participating in a Daniel's fast. And so if you do not know what that is, basically nuts and berries. It's nuts and berries. Alex, take your drink. And so I started going back to church last year at the end of last year it wasn't something that i just like woke up and decided to do it was a conversation that me and nicholas had you know it was something that was very important to him and you know i have also been on my own like spiritual journey of finding like what religion i want to practice if i want to be a part of organized religion that way you know i was raised 
in the church my mama is very very christian like she gonna stop and pray for you at any count of the moment any count of the day like it don't matter if you have time for that prayer or not she's going to stop you but i never was like I never took to that as a kid like I remember being 13 and like driving home from school or somewhere and I remember being in the car and like this was very a nerve-wracking conversation that I had with my mama that day but I remember it crystal clear because it pissed her off she did not want to talk to me for a while okay but like I just simply told her I was like girl I do not believe I don't believe in God or at least in my in my vocabulary that I had to share personal things like that. I didn't believe in God the way that like her and my other family members believed in God. Like I still have a lot of questions and I still do have a lot of questions that I don't feel like I will ever get the answer to. But there is also like a part of me that definitely believes that there is a higher being. That's definitely a big update. And maybe I'll talk more about that on my channel because I feel like I am just the place for the in-between girlies. If you know what that, like, if you know what that means, you know what that means. But I feel like I am, I am the in-between girly. I'm like the average. I've decided that I, I don't want to be an it girl. Like, I'm okay with being the girl next door. And I think a lot of people need to get okay with just being the girl next door. There's nothing wrong with having like your own type of style and personality and not having to fit in with like what social media and the media tell you that you have to be. I wanna be like the in-between of the people who are still learning about themselves. I think a lot of times on social media that people get so caught up in being that they forget to experience and document the becoming. And that's something that I want to make a very big point this year in being intentional and in documenting of the becoming. Like I may not be like one of those Bible thumpers. I may never be a Bible thumper, but I definitely want to document my experience of what going to church looks like for me or what, you know, you know, working through like how I feel about religion and other things and how it plays into like the bigger picture of my life. And I think that there are a lot of people that are also in that in between space of like you know I don't really know what I believe in but I know that I believe in something and this is what this looks like for me and this is what it is for me and I feel like there's space for that y'all girl it is room for you it is room for you like I'm your home girl it is room for you you do not have to come ready made to be accepted here like you just have to come girl just show up just show up. So like that is definitely a new development in my life that I'm so excited for. I feel like there has definitely been some new things that are happening for me in my life that, you know, making this transition as I exited the new year definitely put a lot of things into perspective for me and just gave me a lot of peace and clarity and you know i don't know if it's god i don't know if it's just like time but i know that i feel a lot better than i was feeling before and honestly that's enough for me so me and nick participated in the daniel's fast and we actually have two more days so today is january 20th and our fast actually ends on the 22nd which is monday so because we started the fast with our church on the 2nd of January, not the 1st. Um, so we will be back eating all of those things. We couldn't have no juice. We couldn't have no added sweeteners. And that included like honey, um, any additives like agave. We couldn't have that. You couldn't have anything that was like enriched. So you couldn't have any white rice, any regular pasta. Everything had to be like whole grain and if you wanted like tortillas or something it had to be like corn tortillas or like whole wheat tortillas you couldn't have any dairy um again since i drink almond milk i couldn't have any sweet almond milk so like making meals this month was definitely a lot it was definitely a lot in terms of like having to continuously go back to the grocery store and find things that fit with the fast but I think we did a pretty good job for this boat for this being both of our first fast and I definitely think that if we do this fast again next year I'm going to document um more of like the meals that we cook because that's something that we really struggled on because we really didn't know I added myself to a lot of like Facebook group chats but still I didn't have any like guidance on how I really wanted it to go so that is something that has been taking place in the first half of the year for me i also have been experiencing a lot of um health 
issues that kind of like started as I exited the new year and I plan on making a more in-depth video about this because it is something that I feel like we need to have more dialogue and conversations about in the black community and not just because because black girls go through it but it's because that black girls and black women and mothers don't talk about it so I have been on birth control for a very long time if you follow me on TikTok you saw that I made a video saying like after eight years of birth control, I finally decided to get off of birth control. Did my earring pop off? I think the back of my earring pop off. Hold on. Okay, I couldn't find the back, so we're just going to take them off. But if you follow me on TikTok, you saw that I said that after eight years of birth control, I was finally, you know, getting off of birth control. And that was a decision that I... I didn't, you know, I didn't come to it overnight. I always knew that at the end of the birth control that I had, I had an IUD, that I was going to get off of birth control. Not because me and Nick decided that we were going to start trying for a baby, but just because I wanted to give my body some time to just like regulate. Now, even though I knew that it was going to like the potential of me having like complications, complications after I got the birth control out, I absolutely, I absolutely did not think that it would be going the way that it is so usually usually see these terms they're too they're too generic to be like used for the type of behaviors that they are used to describe but so basically i have been trying to be evaluated for pcos because i haven't been having a cycle and you know when you're not not trying to have a baby but you're not trying to have a baby sometimes like you know, it really like messes with your emotions. It's something that I wrote about, you know, at the beginning of the last year. It's not something that I talk about more, but I think that this is my year of just like talking about it a bit more because I feel like there's room for conversation of like younger people, you know, going through the process of deciding if they want to be parents or not, especially black women. You know, a lot of the times we have this stereotype that like we have to be moms or we just end up being teen moms. And that's not my story. You know, I'm very grateful that that's not my story because like I, I cheer myself on. I cheer myself on when I beat teen pregnancy, okay? But I am at a point in my life where I really want to be a mom. And I want it so bad that it, it I don't have the same career aspirations that like other people have. Now I do have dreams, I have goals, I have aspirations, but like, when I think about the excitement and like fulfillment, fulfillment, I think being a mom would just surpass all of those like career goals. Um, and that's that's a difficult conversation to have when you're like 24 and you have a lot of older friends just like, girl, no, what are you talking about? But like, that's my truth. Like, that's my truth and I'm sticking to it and I'm not gonna shy away from sharing my truth just because it doesn't align with somebody else's truth and where they are in their journey. Now, I'm not saying that I'm gonna get pregnant like tomorrow, but if I did get pregnant tomorrow, I would not be upset about it. But the way that my like reproductive health has been and just like trying to, you know, regulate a cycle that before I got on birth control, which was eight years ago. So let's keep that in mind. It was very regular. Um, it has been kind of disheartening and just the thought of not being able to like conceive my own children and you know, I'm in a long term relationship. So how that plays into my relationship, it is definitely something that it's weighing on me a little bit in this season of my life. I feel like we need to talk about that. I feel like we need to stop acting like this stuff isn't happening because it definitely is. It definitely is happening. And so like that's something that I have been like working through and dealing with in my own personal space. I haven't really shared too much about that. You know, I always um, thought that maybe I had PCOS in the... Um, but every time I would go to doctors, they would tell me that I was fine. You know how that go, black girls. But like even this doctor. So I just recently got um, a recommendation go to an OBGYN. I have that appointment set. Maybe I'll do a video on that. Maybe maybe I just need to share because when I was looking for like things about like PCOS and like conceiving with PCOS and how to change like my diet around, I was watching a lot of videos and it was important for me to see black girls um, talk about the things that I wanted to talk about and talk about the things that I was going through. And so if I can share my journey and possibly be of help to somebody, then 
I'm going to do that because I truly believe that at the end of this difficult time, like I'm going to have a testimony and I'm going to share it. And when it is my turn to become a mom, I'm going to do the best job that I can because it is something that's very important to me. You know, I didn't I didn't think that it was very important to me to ask my friends like she'll never be a mom. She doesn't want kids. And like I said that as kind of like a defense mechanism, of course. But, you know, there was always a part of me that imagined having the husband, having a nice home, the kids, being a soccer mom. Like, y'all, when I say I never dreamed of, like, being a career woman, I always dreamed of being, like, a wife and a mom. I always dreamed of being a wife and a mom. But where I come from and the family that I have, that is not an acceptable, like, thing. And so now that I'm in my own little world and really feeling, like, confident in my little island I'm creating and the family that I'm making, like, that is my truth. Like, I'm no longer cowarding and hiding behind what other people want me to be for the sake of their comfort when I'm uncomfortable like if being if me saying that me being a mom right now at 23 makes you uncomfortable that's your discomfort that has nothing to do with me it is not my responsibility to control other people's response to my life decisions and that's just what we're going to say about that so I definitely think that I'll be making more content around like my journey of like maybe discovering if I have PCOS I end this OBGYN appointment we will be talking about like fertility testing and some ultrasounds and stuff done so like yeah maybe I will share that you know I don't know it's kind of still like a touchy a touchy topic for me I'm kind of still like processing a lot of the stuff that me and my doctors have been talking about over the last couple of months but you know just to be transparent and real the girlies are being real over here and I just want to you know I want to give y'all a little bit more personal side of me not just hair not just vlogs really like you know here's who she is because that's really what I want this platform to be just like you know here is the behind the scenes of the life of Alexis because it's enough fakeness in the world you know what i'm saying so that leads me into like my next thing i have really been reading and when i say reading i mean like i've been reading reading i have always okay i'm not gonna lie there was a time in my life where i didn't really want to read and that's when mom was forcing me to read and this is the signs of parents don't force your kids to read when i tell you i be learning so much from the moms and stuff on tiktok i really do be learning so much from them and just like getting ideas of how I want to you know guide my own children and things I want to implement when they're um young but I have always loved to read it may take me a little bit longer to like do the act of sitting down and reading but once I do I'm content as a B. And so last the end of last year I definitely started reading a lot more and I'm very proud of myself for that because it's something I definitely beat myself up for because I think that I should read more especially as a writer I think that I should read more but I literally just finished this book by Camille Baker called The Moment We Met and I'm gonna do a whole nother video on like the books that I read in January because your girl been reading but I read that book and it's a romance fiction I actually follow her on Instagram and we've interacted a couple times she actually like encouraged me to to start doing poll. I read that book, it was amazing. I read her first book. This was actually her second book and I had been saying I was gonna read it for at least a year. And eventually I was like, okay, I'm gonna get it on Kindle. Come to find out, I can't get it on Kindle. I can only get it on Kindle Unlimited. So you know what your girl got now? I got Kim Kindle Unlimited. And you know, I'm gonna use all of the little gadgets and you know, things that I can do with it because I paid for it. And I got two months of $4.99 and after that $4.99, it may get a little canceled. I ain't gonna lie to you, it may get a little canceled. But I read that book, it was absolutely phenomenal. Cannot wait to give y'all like the rundown of it. But I also have been reading The Power of a Praying Wife. And I think that's one thing that me and my girlfriends talk a lot about is like, you know, not about praying, but like being a wife. What kind of wife do we want to be? I know we talk a lot about like, we know that we want to be married. We definitely want to be married. We want to have husbands. We want to have families. But we also come from households where we didn't have representation of that. And the representation that we did have is very, it's like in a very negative light. And don't nobody got time for that. Not when we trying to break generational curses and be the baddest bitches we can be. Absolutely not. We don't have time to be hearing that. Like one thing, you know, me and Nick do, we, we take what apply and let the rest fly, okay? Because a lot of people will start to share their like opinions on, you know, what, they think you should be doing for your life and what you want to do for your life and i actually found this book i did a search um on tiktok of basically like books um 
books to read before you get married, books for wives, books for, you know, women who are dating. And it was actually not a video that had like a lot of views, but I decided to watch it anyways, because y'all gotta realize that just because a video don't have a lot of views does not mean it's not quality content. It is the year of the micro influencer and I'm not just saying it because I am one. But this book is basically about a wife like going over different scenarios that she has had with her husband and how she has had to pray for him and um just like the different the different things that come about like with being a man there's also a man version of power of praying husband i actually just recommended nick to get it you know if he wanted to i read him a couple of chapters you know he was having a conversation i really thought that he could you know benefit from the chapters that i have been reading but they have chapters based off like your his purpose everything is his because it's basically like, you know, praying for your husband, the power of a praying wife. And while you cannot change him, you cannot force him to become something, you can pray for his becoming. You can pray for his alignment. You can pray for his healing. You can pray for God's intervention. And so, you know, a control freak like me, a control baddie, you know, I I know sometimes I'd be like, damn, why can't I just like snap my fingers and things happen? But it don't work like that. So this book has really given me a time to just like slow down and think about some of those things that I, you know, maybe going through and like how I can better support Nicholas as a woman, as a friend, as a wife, and you know, just the behind the scenes things that, you know, people don't know because I'm, I know I got a praying grandma, I know I got a praying mama, and it's only right for me to pray for my man. And I do pray for him, but I wanna learn how to be more intentional about my prayers. I want to make sure that I'm asking God for the specific things that his heart desires to align him where he needs to be to you know get him to where he want to be because if i'm gonna support you i'm gonna support you the right way and make sure you got all the resources that you need to get to where you want to be I try and read a chapter a day just so i can spread it out but at the end of every chapter there's a specific prayer that you pray that aligns with the theme of the chapter so if it's a thing about finance it's going to be a prayer about finances and then it's going to be another sheet that has like scriptures that you can refer to maybe scriptures that she referenced in the text and the chapters are very very short but I really am enjoying that book. It's giving me a moment to slow down and just like make sure that, you know, while it's easy for you to complain about what other people are doing, you know, in the complaining, you sometimes forget to do your part. And, I, you know, that's something that I have like reflected on um, just to be a little bit transparent because, you know, the girlies be thinking we write all the time and sometimes we aren't right. And it just be like that sometimes. You know what I'm saying? I really have been enjoying reading and getting back into my writer girl bag for sure because don't nobody tell you what it feel like to get back to something you love like when you're in the habit of like not doing those things getting back to something can feel like war can feel like war and even though you know it's something that you're supposed to be doing getting back to it can feel like dragging ass dragging feet everything and that's kind of what reading has felt like for me i got a home full of books and books i know i want to read book more books that i want to buy i definitely am proud of myself for just taking a couple hours throughout the week to just like sit down and give some time to myself and just dive into these other books because i am finishing this book this year and i cannot be a great writer if i do not read and actually go into that writers conference i did a blog about that you can go see that on my channel i actually link it here but like going to the writers conference really helped bring me back into a space of wanting to be a creator wanting to write again wanting to share my work wanting to submit to competitions and contests because before i just wasn't feeling that and that's a part of like the goal so like a year hmm, let's say new year's 2020 so last year, let's just say last year, like entering into the new year of last year, I decided that I was no longer going to be celebrating New Year's in the way that I usually had. And it's not because I had any bad experience or anything, but I was so tired of getting to the end of the year and like feeling like a failure because the list of things that I envisioned for myself in January did not turn out to be what they were in December. And it's all about giving yourself grace and adjusting timelines and goals with the direction, the season, and everything going on in your life. And I talked about this on here, I lost my job and I didn't have a job for a year damn near, like 11 months. Even with me applying, even with me doing all the things that I was supposed to be doing, I still couldn't find a job. And that's with me having two degrees and experience in different 
areas of work. It was just a bad market. It still is a bad market. You know, I got this job because I freelance. I also talk a little bit more about that on my, you know, full time content creation video. But I said I wasn't setting a long list of goals anymore because I was tired of feeling like a failure. But I'm not feeling like a failure anymore. So I'm giving myself 1% goals this year and just doing little things to meet my goal and like encouraging myself a little bit more so that at the end of the year, I don't feel like a failure. And I can count all the things that I have done, even if it didn't align with the large list of things that I thought about when I was thinking about all the things I didn't do the year before. Very excited for all that life will bring for me this year. I really feel like this is gonna be a good year. Not my year, just just a good year. I'm deserving of a good year. Y'all are deserving of a good year, friend. Friend, you are deserving of a good year. Like, don't let nobody tell you no different. You are deserving of a good year because we are just great people. And as long as you just keep that at the forefront of your brain, like I'm just trying to be the nicest person, not even the nicest, the kindest most genuine person that I can be, work towards my goals and my dreams. Like, you just gotta keep, be locked in. Be locked in on yourself. Be locked in on the things that you wanna do. Be locked in on your friends. You know, re retaining and maintaining relationships are really hard when you're not in shared spaces. So don't be too hard on yourself. If that's a goal, you know, small goals, 1% goals. If you can't make that event, schedule the next one. Like, if you don't wanna go out, don't beat yourself up for it. Because one thing about me, I don't ever want to go out. You know, this is just a little update on my life. I hope that it wasn't too too much like TMI. Um, but I definitely want to start sharing a lot more of like what goes on. Just because, you know, you never know who your journey will help. You never know what is at the end of your story, the end of your journey. And you never want to miss out on being, you know, able to testify and just say that like you made it through something. Like I one thing. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna play me some gospel music up in this house. And Marvin Sapp, listen, I made it through, okay? I made it through. So glad I made it, okay? That's all I wanna say. Like, what's that other? I wanna look in the mirror and say, well done. You can come on in, okay? That's all I wanna say. You know what I'm saying? And another one that I be having on repeat is uh, that Bashan Mitchell. That, uh, that, uh, what is it? It's turning around for me, okay? I can see the breaking. Mm, Cause what? I can see the breaking of day. Cause God is, let me tell you, making a way. What? A change is coming for me. If I stand strong and believe, I know he's working it out. What? And it's turning around for me. Okay? That should be, that should be, uh, that should be on repeat. Okay? Don't play with uh, me. I'm her. God said, don't play with her. Don't play with my best friend. Period. Okay? Because what, what, what Marvin Stop say? Come on. Let me tell you one thing. Remember, just know he has his hands on. quick little easy beat i'm definitely about to run a sephora because i realized while we was making this video that i ran out of my favorite mascara y'all know i love this better than sex chocolate mascara so i'm definitely gonna make my handy dandy black man take me to ulta because it's what saturday shopping day and yes we we spilled the tea in this video okay we spilled some real tea okay and if you know me and you see this video you don't know me just act like i'm i'm one of the girls okay because we girls we girls here we girls okay bookie but yes y'all just to just break soak it all in because we we really talked we talked about life we talked about books we talked about reading we talked about fasting we talked about goals we we talked about it, okay? And it was very, it was, I liked this. I like this. I'm going to have to do a couple more of these and go in depth into a couple of the topics that I uh, talked about. So, yeah. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Be sure to leave a comment. Tell me what you liked about this video. Tell me anything else you want me to dive deeper into. If you also have been experiencing some of what I talked about, let me know. Like, let's talk about it. Let's be friends, okay? So, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and tune in for my next video. Bye, y'all.